what it is this is controlled pairs with controlled pairs gaming and today i am bringing you episode two of our kerbal space program tutorial series kerbal space program for dummies i hope you enjoyed today's video i am going to teach you how to bring those craft that are in orbit back into the atmosphere survive re-entry and land somewhere near the kerbal space center before i get started i'd like to remind you to support me by sending me money I'm just kidding. If you like the video, just show the love by liking it down below, as well as leaving a comment, maybe subscribing to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. First thing we're going to do today is click on the space, uh, the tracking center over there on the right. We are going to enter it, and you're going to get this message the first time you get here. On the left side of the screen, you are going to see the craft we left in orbit from our last video. Go ahead and click on it, and then click fly. Now, with the introduction of this new aerodynamic model in Kerbal Space Center, or Kerbal Space Program 1.0, re-entry is now deadly, so we have to be very careful. If we come in too steep, then we'll end up burning up in the atmosphere. If we come in too shallow, then we're going to end up skipping off the atmosphere and being stuck in orbit forever. So, first thing we're going to do is hit M to open up our map. We're going to click on the bottom to expose our nav ball, and we're going to start thinking about how we are going to get home. Alright, Kerbal Space Center is located on the continent of what looks like Africa. Easiest way to identify it is it looks kind of like Africa. And then if you come over here off the coast of Africa, you will see the island chain Hawaii. And next to Hawaii is a little patch of uh, land that is a little bit brighter than the other area surrounding it. And Kerbal Space Center is located off of that um, little patch right there. So in order to return, we want to land in the coast, usually in the water right off the coast of Kerbal Space Center, so somewhere right in here. In order to do that, all we gotta do is plan a maneuver node, right? And unfortunately, it's kind of a guessing game. Hmm. Alright, I stabilized that shit because it was all shaky. Alright, uh, go ahead and click somewhere on your orbital trajectory, add a maneuver node, and we are going to plan a prograde burn that is going to get us... Oh, where are we at? 14. That'll do it. Alright, so what I just did was I created a maneuver node that is going to uh, be a retrograde burn, a really, really small one. All it's going to do is bring our perapsis down to around 15 K above the surface of Kerbin. Now we are going to move that maneuver node over yonder. And that's probably a little bit too much. By the way, mo uh, moving your maneuver node, all you do is click on it and then you can click on the circle and drag it. It's way easier than just trying to recreate one every, uh, every time you have to make an adjustment. All right, we're going to try it right there. We're going to put it right there. Unfortunately, re entry, you're kind of guessing <laughs> so it's a challenge um, so now we know where that maneuver node is located we know it's going to be a three second burn if we look down here at the bottom and that burn is going to take place in approximately five minutes so I'm going to hit the period key on the bottom of, the, of uh, excuse me on my keyboard and I'm going to time accelerate to within 30 seconds of that burn now unfortunately we didn't put any batteries on this spacecraft so it has no electric charge, but we can still fire the engine and we, when we do fire the engine, it will generate an electric charge and we will be able to maneuver it. So uh, in the future, you know, when you're uh, making these things, you might want to put some batteries or some solar panels or something on it, but we'll go over more of that later. So here we are, three seconds out, I go ahead and fire my engines, I gain a little bit of control, and here we go orient directly on that maneuver node, that blue tick mark on the nav ball and begin accelerating. Burning it down, burning it down. Let's see. I'm slowly accelerating towards that maneuver node and we've got 2.3, 1.2. That's probably as good as it's going to get. Where are we at? Perfect. I will take it. Alright, now after you do this, you might want to hit the F5 key, that is a quick save feature. Anything goes wrong, as long as you've hit F5, you can later on hit F9 and hold it down and it will take you back to wherever you hit F5. So it'll save your life and you will appreciate it, I promise. Hmm. 
how close are we going to get to Kerbal Space Center? Da -da -da -da. Here we go. All right, we are starting to get some uh, atmospheric effects now. It looks like we're going to overshoot the Space Center, but I'm going to just go ahead and deal with it. No big deal. Uh, before we go to re-enter the atmosphere, I am going to jettison my fuel tanks here by hitting spacebar, getting rid of it, and then I am going to um, hope the rest of this thing works out. On the bottom of our spacecraft, if you remember from the previous episode, we added a heat shield. That heat shield, if you right click on it, has what's called ablator, or whatever the correct actual scientific term for that is. That is a, uh, the units there that are represented 200 out of 200, that's going to soak up all the friction, all the heat as we, um, as we move through the atmosphere. So as we continue to move through the atmosphere, you're going to see that 200 begin to de decrease as the flames and the heat and all that effect start popping up. Um, and if it gets to zero, we die. We overheat and Jeb Kerman here inside the cockpit is going to die. If you're curious about how to get inside the cockpit, like I just did, hit C on your keyboard. It's pretty freaking sweet, especially later on once you do other cool stuff. So we're gonna time accelerate, see how we did here, man. La da 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 la da 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 da. Jeb is going to re-enter. I'm sorry. I'm I don't like dead air in my videos, so I just have to time accelerate, and I don't feel like doing a post commentary because it's such a simple video. So you get the distinct privilege of listening to me attempt to ramble about nonsense until we actually get to our destination here momentarily. But fortunately, we are now 47 clicks off the ground, and we should very shortly begin to see reentry effects, and uh, and all should be well in the world. A quick note here, as you begin to enter the atmosphere and decelerate, do not deploy your parachute. That means do not hit spacebar for the final time, deploying this parachute until you are less than, I don't know, like 300 meters per second. Anything over that, and um, you're going to end up going kaput, and that thing's going to get rip ripped off, and you're just you're going to have a bad day. All right, so we are entering the atmosphere. We actually ended up starting to get those atmospheric effects right as we come over this Kerbal Space Center. This is my first attempt at this video. It still looks like we're going to overshoot this thing. However, that was pretty good for just eyeballing it and going for it. Unfortunately, whenever you are planning your re-entries, you do have to eyeball it. It's just the nature of the beast. It is what it is. So that's why you hit F5 before you do your decelera deceleration burn. And, um... And hopefully you get as lucky as I just did. And you actually get close to Kerbal Space Center. Let's jump in the cockpit with old Jeb. I wonder if he'll actually be able to see. Maybe. Maybe. Where is home, Jeb? Where is home? Can you see it? Can you dig it? Nope, won't be able to see it. That's a shame. And I can't really steer very well right now. Oh well, suffice to say that that was a sweet re-entry and uh, we did pretty good and if you look at our ablator or whatever that you know stuff is we are at uh, 185 so we could have came in way steeper and probably still survived just fine but it's a good habit to know how to do this um, re-entry without getting a lot of heating effects and um, you know it's just good good stuff we're playing sandbox mode right now if you play career mode re-entry is going to be way important for you because um you want to bring as much stuff back from space as possible because the more you bring back the more money you save the more funds you save the more success you have in your career mode i don't play a lot of career mode career mode because frankly i don't have the patience for it i'm really uh i'm a creative kind of guy i like to just have infinite of everything and uh and just go nuts with some wild designs and crazy missions that i it would just take way too much time in career mode so it is what it is all right, now we're below 300 meters per second, and um, we're going to go ahead and deploy that parachute by hitting spacebar. Parachute comes out. It looks all pretty-like. That parachute is set to deploy at 500 meters. If you look at the top, we're at 5K. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward down. When you do time accelerate to when your parachute deploys, don't ever time accelerate through it. Sometimes physics has a tendency to screw you, and if you were going like four times time acceleration as you hit 500 meters per second you end up uh, having a bad day and the parachute rips off so parachute deploy we are floating down off the coast of Kerbal Space Center and um, hey that's a mission success looks like old Jebediah Kerman is going to uh, survive to fly some more suicidal missions on our behalf which is what this is all about so if you enjoyed the video show the love by liking below leaving a comment and please consider subscribing if you like these tutorials stay tuned a lot more of them are coming next we're gonna teach you guys how to dock we're gonna take you to the moon all sorts of good stuff and until next time this is controlled pairs signing off